where my old friend and uh, for our letter from Australia or a letter from Sydney, Jackie Lane, uh, same devaluation of academic degrees and standards in Australia? Obviously not, Jackie, given how many Australian universities in the top 100 in the world. <laughs> Uh, look, I think it's a very live topic here um, because, as we've mentioned before, you know, education is a huge export uh, for Australia and it added, you know, $12 billion in the September quarter last year. You know, wow. so it's a huge chunk of change. I think it's yeah. our um, third biggest export. So, uh, and, and the universities have been forced into that because of the decline in government funding and it's... You know, it's, it's one of those conundrums. Do you fund universities and, and kind of prevent this kind of buying of degrees, whether they're PhDs or whatever, or do you go into a free market kind of gig, which is what's happened in Australia? You know, I guess the real question is, um, are these PhDs getting jobs and adding real value to their lives and their communities and the economy? And what's the answer to that? I <laughs> uh, don't know, um, but you know, it'd be interesting to have a look at you know what you know had some research around the uh, what happens to PhD students, where, where do they actually go, yeah, yeah, and what yeah. are they actually yeah. contributing? Yeah, yeah, and is it worth the investment or the debt that Correct. they usually take it on to get there? That's right. Uh, and certainly in Australia now, you have a, a very strong thing, and not just at PhD level where. Um, you know, younger people are choosing not to go to university because it's cost, it costs so much and they can actually earn more money leaving school and doing a trade or, or getting getting into a job and, and and learning on the job rather than spending three or four years and fifty sixty thousand dollars $60,000 plus. Mm, mm, mm. No, no. The problem is we don't all want to become a plumber, a builder, an electrician um, or a jib stopper, do we? No, but if you do in New Zealand, you can get paid twenty grand to come over to Australia. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> and get yeah, 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 that's right. yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, great, great, great way to kind of get PR and become an Australian citizen these days. Well, and that's the other thing, of course, because our former Prime Minister, two beforehand, Jacinda Ardern. Uh, sat down, I think, with Anthony Albanese and made it easier for New Zealanders to get citizenship in Australia, which meant that, therefore, that they could get access to, you know, services that previously had yep. been denied to them. Um, I'm, we're looking at the immigration or the immigration statistics from New Zealand at the moment. There's plenty of anecdotal, but um, I still haven't seen the hard facts yet, but plenty of anecdotal evidence that New Zealanders are flooding into Australia um, for a whole series of vocational, and professional and trade jobs. Uh, from as from a New Zealand perspective, or somebody who's been in Australia for a while now, Jack, um, is it your view that there are more New Zealanders coming, or is just a continual? It's always been a continual stream. I think there's always been a continual stream. Um, I think there's certainly been an uptake, and the the stats do show it. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think in the um, last quarter or year to date. 22,000 New Zealanders have made their way to Australia primarily because um, the, the Albanese government now has changed the rules again. If you come here as a New Zealander with a trade, um, you can get permanent residency after one year uh, and become an Australian citizen. And as we've talked about before, state governments are paying twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 sign-on fees for policemen, nurses, teachers, doctors, anybody. So, um, you know, we'll, we keep exporting the duds, the crims, back to you, uh, even if they haven't lived in New Zealand for 40 years, and we'll just take the best and brightest, you know, and bring them over here. Urban rural thing where, you know, all the bright kids leave Danny Burke and head to Wellington or Auckland back in the 1980s in New Zealand. Um, yeah. Not, not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, but ha ha having said that, you know, I... Um, uh, quite a few of my New Zealand friends who came here after me in the 90s, many of them have actually gone back to New Zealand, uh, you know, 20, 30 years on, because uh, of quality of life and closer to family and, it's, and um, you know, you can get more for your buck. So I think I'm kind of the last person standing of a whole group of my cohort who came over here. All of them have gone back. Um, now, talking also about um, excitement, um, 
Australia is doing rather well in the Olympics at the moment, particularly your women um, and your and uh, your, the Australian swimming uh, team in particular. Hello. Hello, Jack. Jack, can you hear me? Josh. Hello. Um, no, I can hear you, Jackie. I can hear you. Um, I can hear Jackie. Can you? She can obviously not hear me. Okay, so we'll get back to Jackie in just a second. No, um, the Australian women in particular are doing extraordinarily and exceedingly well, uh, I have to say, over there. Um, and they usually have a, they, there was a bit of an edge when we talked to Jackie about it between the Australian swimmers and the American swimmers, by the looks of things, the Aussies, they're a competitive group of individuals, it has to be said, um, are winning that particular race. Um, they, Australians don't like the Americans. Uh, they think the Americans, now this is a little amuse you, they think the Americans, okay, well hopefully we've got Jackie back on the line. Jackie, can you hear me? I can, I can oh. now. I don't know what happened there. Oh, that's all right. That's okay. It happens. Thank you. Listen, I was just talking about the um, rival swim teams from Australia and the United States. There was a bit of feeling prior to the Olympics. Uh, and ironically, the Australians regarded the Americans as a bit brash. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, which, you know, good God, you know, that's very amusing. Yeah. Having said that, you're, the Australians seem to be winning that particular contest, do they? Um, I think the girls have. I think the women have. I don't think the boys have done so well. Um, there's a mm. bit of conversation happening about, around, you know, the good old um, um, Australian male egos had a bit of a... It didn't. The girls, I think, are, are way out swimming the guys. Um, so that, that's the top of a conversation over here at the moment. Not so much the American, you know, Australian thing. Oh, OK. The girls are doing better than the boys. Mind you, I think that's... Yes. That's almost true here too, isn't it? We've got two gold medals. Yeah, no, they're both won by girls' teams, uh, rowing and seven. So, you're, yep, um, yep. Wh y y the Aust why Australia takes the Olympics pretty seriously. There was a story, I think, uh, a long time ago, they did really badly at one Olympics. I think it might have been 1984 when we actually got more gold medals and they went, well, we're not going to be humiliated again. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a lot about national consciousness and identity, isn't it? Uh, uh, sport in Australia? Very much so. And um, yeah, you pick up on a, on a good thing. So I'm not sure how long ago, maybe 10 years ago, you know, when they had that not good Olympics. Uh, it really, I think, came out that the culture of the team, the swimming team, was pretty toxic. It was almost like, um, you, you know, they thought that they were the best in the world and they believed their own Kool-Aid and they became super arrogant. Um, so, you know... So it was a big wake-up call for the, I think, Swimming Australia and a number of members of those teams, and they realised that, you know, they, they actually had to pull their heads in and, um, you know, not get, be too full of themselves. And, and to, the, to the credit of the organisation, I guess, it, it, it did, and it turned it round, but they had to work at it pretty hard because, you know, we are the greatest in the world attitude didn't work. Mm. Mm, but, you know, I can't see that getting abandoned very soon in a whole series of other sports, though, to be fair. Hey, listen, yeah. um, the other issue that is, and today it starts, I think, this ongoing incredible saga to do with uh, Brittany Higgins. Um, we all know that it's, there's, there seems to be a new turn every week, uh, and now today the trial begins, the defamation trial, I understand, for which she is the defendant, not the plaintiff, uh, and a former Liberal Cabinet Minister by the name of Linda Reynolds is suing her um, over the then government's or the Liberal government's handling um, of her rape allegations. Um, can I ask the obvious question, Jack, and that is you will know better than I, you're well connected, obviously, that's why you're on the show. What's the view of Australians to do with this issue now? Where, have, have views changed? Is it a beltway only issue? Or is there a, is this Australia's Dreyfus case? Oh, look, it, interesting question. So the whole thing's kind of been out of the media for a period of time. So other things have come on, you know, come along, you know, Tour de France, Olympics, um, CFMEU and unions and building. So there's been some other... 
other issues because, you know, really after after Lerman's...